The debate between Mike Tyson and Muhammad Ali, as two of the greatest boxers in history, has long fascinated both boxing enthusiasts and sports fans alike. While their skills and in-ring performances are often at the forefront of this comparison, an equally intriguing aspect is how these two legends approach their training methods. Tyson and Ali employed distinct training regimens, reflecting not only their personal styles and strengths, but also the different eras in which they competed. Boxing Styles Mike Tyson, aptly named Iron Mike, was an embodiment of ferocity in the boxing world. His style was characterised by its aggressive, explosive and unrelenting nature. When the first bell rang, Mike's instinct was to charge forward, unleashing unyielding pressure upon his opponents. His modus operandi involved overpowering and intimidating adversaries from the onset, creating a foundation for quick knockouts. At the heart of Tyson's offensive repertoire lay the art of power punching, with an emphasis on devastating hooks and uppercuts. His punches were renowned for their sheer force, forming a lethal alliance with his explosive speed. Knockouts were almost inevitable in his fights. To effectively slip incoming punches and close the gap, Mike employed the bobbing and weaving technique. This nuanced head movement allowed him to evade the punches headed his way, paving the path to the inside range where he could be most devastating. Beyond his physical attributes, Tyson's demeanour inside and outside the ring was a potent psychological weapon. His reputation as an aggressive, no-nonsense fighter could strike fear into the hearts of his opponents, often impacting their composure and strategic approach. Mike's combinations were characterised by their brevity, blistering speed and astonishing power. These lightning fast flurries regularly culminated in early round knockouts, solidifying his status as a ferocious puncher. When in close quarters, Tyson's prowess was most pronounced. He had an unparalleled ability to deliver destructive punches in the tight confines of an infighting, rendering him a formidable and menacing adversary. In contrast to Mike's ferocity, Muhammad Ali, who reigned over the heavyweight division in the 1960s and 70s, showcased a graceful and tactical boxing style. Ali's hallmark was his balletic footwork, characterised by incredible agility and fluid movements. He seemed to dance around the ring with grace, making it exceptionally challenging for opponents to land clean punches. His ability to float like a butterfly was matched only by his sting as a bee. Muhammad's defensive skills were second to none. He was a master of evasion, utilising techniques like the rope-a-dope, where he would lean against the ropes, allowing opponents to exhaust themselves in vain, only to respond with devastating counter-punches. His ability to avoid harm was a critical asset. The jab was one of Ali's most potent weapons. He used it to control the pace of the fight, keep opponents at bay and dictate the distance between himself and his adversaries. Muhammad's jab was not just a simple tool, it was a strategic instrument. Beyond his physical attributes, Ali was a maestro of psychological warfare. Inside and outside the ring, he taunted, baited and verbally sparred with opponents to disrupt their concentration and confidence. His charismatic antics were as much a part of his arsenal as his boxing skills. Running Tyson incorporated relatively shorter, yet highly intense running sessions into his daily routine. Typically, his mornings would commence with these explosive runs, covering several miles. While the distance covered might not have been as extensive as Ali's, Mike's approach held its own unique advantages. For Tyson, these shorter yet high intensity runs served as a potent kickstart to his day. They were not just about building endurance, but also had a deeper purpose. They allowed him to clear his mind, focus his energy, and mentally prepare for the rigorous training that lay ahead. In the solitude of the morning, Mike found the perfect environment to hone his mental discipline, preparing himself for the relentless intensity of his workouts and upcoming bouts. The runs also contributed significantly to Tyson's overall conditioning, ensuring he would sustain a relentless pace throughout his fights where his aggressive style often led to quick knockouts. In stark contrast, Muhammad Ali, celebrated for his tactical and strategic approach to boxing, adopted long distance running as a cornerstone of his training regimen. Ali's morning runs were notably longer, often spanning several miles. His emphasis on extensive running was rooted in a profound understanding of his unique fighting style and physical demands. Muhammad recognised that his graceful and strategic boxing style required him to maintain constant movement and footwork over the course of lengthy matches. 
To meet these demands, he engaged in long distance running to enhance his stamina and endurance. These extended running sessions sometimes even exceeded the marathon distance, allowing him to build the cardiovascular resilience required to dance around the ring and outlast his opponents. It was part of his intricate strategy to keep his opponents on the move and capitalize on their exhaustion. Moreover, Ali's extended runs contributed significantly to his psychological resilience. Enduring long, grueling runs day after day fortified his mental toughness, enabling him to endure the physical and mental challenges he faced in the ring. These runs were not just about physical fitness, but also about honing the unwavering mental fortitude that defined his legendary career. Strength Training Mike's workouts often revolved around bodyweight exercises, resistance training and calisthenics. Tyson's training philosophy emphasised building strength that was directly applicable to his in-ring performance. He frequently incorporated exercises like push-ups, pull-ups, dips and medicine ball workouts which targeted his upper body, core and explosiveness. On the other hand, Muhammad Ali recognised that building bulky muscles which can slow a fighter down was not suitable for his boxing style. Ali's training regimen placed a greater emphasis on functional strength and conditioning. He leaned toward endurance-based strength training, incorporating exercises like long distance running and rope skipping to enhance his cardiovascular fitness, agility and stamina. While he did engage in some resistance training, it was less focused on building muscle mass and more on developing lean functional strength. Defense and sparring. Tyson's peekaboo style involved keeping a high guard with his gloves close to his face to protect against incoming punches. His bobbing and weaving head movement allowed him to slip opponents' punches effectively, making it difficult for them to land clean shots. He would also use a peekaboo stance to smother his opponents and reduce their punching range. Mike's exceptional head movement and the ability to slip and counter made his defense a formidable aspect of his fighting style. Tyson used sparring sessions to practice closing the gap quickly and delivering powerful body shots. The intensity of his sparring helped him develop a relentless fighting style that overwhelmed many of his opponents. His defense and sparring tactics were geared toward getting inside and delivering knockout blows. Ali's defense was primarily built around his quick footwork and agility. He relied on his ability to evade punches by dancing, shuffling and circling his opponents, making him a challenging target. He had a unique style that was sometimes referred to as float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. Muhammad used his footwork and superb reflexes to avoid punches and tire out his opponents. In sparring, Ali focused on refining his speed and endurance. His training partners often emulated his opponent's style and he used sparring sessions to work on maintaining his mobility and elusiveness. He utilised these sessions to perfect his strategy of wearing down opponents and capitalising on openings as they became fatigued. Mental Preparation Tyson was known for his intense and often intimidating demeanour. His mental preparation involved cultivating a fearsome and aggressive persona both inside and outside the ring. Mike would psych himself up by adopting a mindset of ferocity and invincibility. He would enter the ring with the intention to intimidate and overpower his opponents mentally before the fight even began. To maintain this mentality, Tyson often watched footage of his opponents, visualizing strategies to defeat them. He would focus on their weakness and ways to exploit them, building his confidence and belief in his own abilities. Mike's mental preparation was geared toward creating an aura of dominance and invincibility. Ali was renowned for his charismatic and playful personality. His mental preparation was rooted in his self-confidence and belief in his boxing skills. Muhammad had a unique ability to use psychological warfare to unsettle his opponents. He often engaged in pre-fight banter and mind games, sowing seeds of doubt and frustration in his rivals. Ali's preparation involved a deep self-belief in his float like a butterfly, sting like a bee philosophy. He visualized himself dancing around opponents, avoiding punches and capitalizing on their mistakes. Muhammad's approach was more about psychological manipulation and building a strong self-image rather than adopting an intimidating demeanor. Diet and Nutrition Tyson's diet was tailored to fuel his aggressive and explosive boxing style. 
His diet mirrored the ferocious style and aimed to provide him with the energy and nutrients he needed for peak performance. Mike recognized the importance of lean protein sources for muscle recovery and development. Chicken, lean beef and fish were staples in his diet. Mike's focus on protein aligned with his need for strength and explosive power in the ring. He required muscle mass and endurance to deliver quick and powerful punches, often aiming for early round knockouts. Carbohydrates were another essential component of Tyson's diet. They provided the energy necessary for his intense training sessions and fights. Complex carbohydrates like brown rice and whole grains form the basis of his carbohydrate intake. These choices helped sustain his energy levels and ensure he could maintain the relentless pace that characterized his fighting style. Ali's approach to diet and nutrition was distinct from Mike's, mirroring his graceful and tactical boxing style. His diet was designed to align with these attributes and cater to the demands of his strategic approach to boxing. Muhammad's diet was well balanced, emphasizing a variety of foods from different food groups. He understood the importance of obtaining a wide range of nutrients to support his overall health and athletic performance. Unlike Tyson, Ali did not follow a diet that excluded specific food groups, allowing for greater dietary flexibility. Lean protein sources were also integral to Muhammad's diet. He recognized the significance of protein for muscle recovery and stamina, especially considering his boxing style that often involved dancing around the ring for extended periods. He incorporated sources like chicken, fish and eggs to meet his protein needs. Where Ali's diet notably differed from Mike's was in his choice to include dairy products. Muhammad was not averse to consuming dairy, recognizing its nutritional value, particularly for calcium and protein. This inclusion in his diet was consistent with his holistic approach to nutrition and fitness. Recovery. Tyson was a powerhouse of explosiveness and relied heavily on strength and power. His recovery training was focused on rejuvenating and maintaining his muscles and nervous system. After intense training sessions, he would often incorporate contrast baths or cold water immersion to reduce inflammation and promote muscle recovery. He also used massage therapy and foam rolling to alleviate muscle soreness and tension. Additionally, Tyson recognized the importance of quality sleep for recovery. He prioritized getting sufficient rest, aiming for at least eight hours of sleep per night. Adequate sleep allowed his body to repair and regenerate, crucial for his explosive fighting style. Muhammad placed a significant emphasis on cardiovascular endurance and footwork. Ali's recovery routine involved long, slow runs or low intensity cycling, which helped him flush out lactic acid and reduce muscle soreness. He also incorporated static stretching to improve flexibility and maintain his nimbleness. Muhammad was known for his mental resilience and he used visualization and meditation techniques during recovery. These practices helped him maintain focus and reduce stress as mental recovery was an essential to his style as physical recuperation. Conditioning. Tyson's conditioning training was geared towards building explosive strength and muscular endurance. He incorporated high intensity interval training sessions, which consisted of short bursts of maximum effort mimicking the intensity of his fights. This form of training allowed him to maintain his ferocious punching power throughout bouts. Furthermore, Mike's conditioning involved a mix of plyometric exercises, including box jumps and explosive push-ups to enhance his fast twitch muscle fibers, ultimately improving his speed and explosiveness. Muhammad Ali had a more endurance-based conditioning routine. His boxing style relied heavily on his agility, speed, and the ability to maintain his energy over long strategic fights. Muhammad incorporated long distance running into his conditioning regimen. He often ran several miles at a consistent pace, emphasizing cardiovascular endurance and conditioning his body for extended matches. This aerobic training allowed Ali to dance around the ring and outmaneuver opponents for many rounds. Muhammad also incorporated rope skipping into his conditioning routine, which improved his footwork, agility, and coordination. Jumping rope was not only a cardiovascular workout, but also a way to fine tune his rhythm and timing. In conclusion, the contrasting training methods of Mike Tyson and Muhammad Ali reflect not only their individual styles in the ring, but also the eras in which they competed. Tyson's intense and explosive training, characterized by power-focused workouts and shorter, high-intensity runs, 
mirrored his relentless and intimidating fighting style. In contrast, Arlie's graceful and strategic approach to training, marked by longer runs and a balanced diet, complemented his agile and tactical boxing style. These differences in training methods demonstrate that there is no one-size-fits-all approach to boxing, and the unique strengths and attributes of each fighter played a significant role in shaping their distinctive legacies in the sport.